Hey fellas, hope you all had a Merry Christmas. <clears throat> since 2019 is getting ready to wrap up, I thought I'd throw together, since I saw a lot of other people doing it, I thought I'd copy off of them, a uh, favorite things video. And this is just some of the, the things that I like um, in the modeling hobby that I use a lot that are some of my favorite things. So without further ado, let's uh, take a look at them. Oh, I will be putting out a new build series in the next couple days on the uh, Zuki Mura 132nd scale TA-152H1. I'll show you a picture of it. So we'll be doing a build series on this. I've already got a lot of it done, but and I've already started filming, so stay tuned for that as well. But here's some of my favorite things. All right, so my first favorite thing we're going to talk about is cement. Now, everybody has their favorites, and to me, an extra thin seems to be a favorite of a lot of modelers. And the regular stuff was my favorite at one point until I started using the extra thin quick setting. Now, this stuff dries a lot faster. Uh, I just like it a lot better. This seems to take forever to dry, to cure. This stuff, it may not be... Uh, it doesn't, in my opinion, melt the plastic as much as the regular stuff, but it, it works It works like a charm. Um, sometimes you have to put a little bit more on there than you would with the extra thin, but it, uh, it, it, it does its job and it does it quickly. Now, I've heard some people say that you uh, this is just an additive. It's not a cement by itself. They're wrong. This is actual cement. It's just a quicker setting, whatever formulation they have in there. It just works faster. My favorite thing. <clears throat> All right. Now let's go to uh, fillers. A lot of people have their favorite putties. If you've watched any of my videos for a period of time, you know that I like using Zappa Gap Thin CA mixed with um, Ammo MIG metallic pigment. This one is gunmetal. Now I've tried other pigments, they don't work. So there's something with the metallic pigment in here that uh, allows it to mix. If you use a regular pigment, like an earth color or something, it just clogs up and it doesn't give you the effect that this does. This actually mixes with the CA, and uh, it when you spread it on, where if you're gonna fill a gap, if you're gonna level out a step, uh, this works like a charm. It dries really quickly when you use it with the, uh, the accelerator, so I just, um, spread this where I need to put it, put on some accelerator, sand it. It sands a lot easier with the metallic pigment in than it does with just regular CA. With the metallic in it, you can also see where you put it, which is kind of difficult sometimes when you use just CA glue. Um, I also use, along with this, is a must-have, is a glue looper. And I have these in different sizes. They come in a package like this. This is by Creative Dynamic. It's called the Glue Looper. I got this either on Amazon or on eBay. But they, they come in different sizes on a photo etch fret. And you just peel them off as you use them. Now they do last a while if you take care of them. So I keep a little plastic shield on them. Uh, now the, the CA glue will dry on here. You just take a lighter, heat it up. It'll melt the CA glue off. And then you can carefully wipe away the the rest of it now these do sometimes bend and break you just replace it uh, with a new one but uh, these have lasted me a while must have all right another i guess you could call it a gap filler uh, you can use it for a lot of different things it is the this stuff is i bought this off ebay it's an epoxy sculpt or it's called magic sculpt and I bought this from an eBay seller, Moore's More, M-O-R-E-Z-M-O-R-E, -E -E, off eBay. I don't have any affiliation with them, but uh, you know that I do love this stuff. Now this is a two-part epoxy putty, and how this works is you've got the hardener, which is this white stuff, and it can get a little messy. And you've got the resin, which is stuff that's not quite as messy. It's a little, it's gray. And you just take equal parts, put them together, mix them up to where they're one consistent color. And as you can see, my hands get a little messy with the white stuff. 
and it's like a, it almost feels like, like this blue tack stuff that I keep here. It almost feels like that consistency. But you can shape it, you can make um, cushions with it, you can make fabric out of it, you can put it along seam lines, fill in seam lines, it'll give you a nice strong seam. And uh, there's just a lot you can do with it. Now while it hasn't cured, and it usually takes about, a, I usually leave it overnight to cure, to get really hard. Uh, once it does cure, it is sandable, but it's really it's is kind of tough to sand. But if you got a, a a really big gap like what I had with my privateer, where I had to fill in some spaces, this is the way to go. So this will this will uh, you can put it in there. You can um, smooth it out with water. It's 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 water soluble, but once it's dry, you can't it, uh, water doesn't affect it. So. If you got a if you got a big seam that you want to fill in, but you don't want to have to do any sanding, you can put this down in there. Uh, you know, just get it down in the seam, then take a Q-tip with some water and start wiping it away. I think I've demonstrated that on a couple videos. But once it hardens, this is some extra that I've had left over, and it is really hard and it's really strong stuff. I can't really break it with my hands. I'll get out my my pliers here and show you how hard it is to break ah, there we go and so it is really tough really strong stuff it's not brittle it does have just a little bit of give <laughs> oh, well, I can't break that part so you can see there we go you can see it's really tough really strong stuff Highly recommended if you're going to be doing scratch building or um, it's just really good to have in your arsenal for those gaps that uh, you don't want to do any sanding on. Really good stuff. All right, now let's move on to some airbrushes. And my favorite airbrush of all time, and this is the first one that I ever got, it's the Iwata HPCS. Let me get some stuff and wipe this magic sculpt off my hand okay the Iwata HPCS it's got a 3.5 millimeter nozzle if you can only afford one airbrush this is the brush to get I think it usually sells for around 150 bucks well worth the money it's a bargain in my mind at that price you can do just about everything with it with a 3.5 millimeter nozzle you can get pretty fine um, but you can also spray big stuff too. It's just a good all-around workhorse airbrush. A lot of times when I spray, I'll take this uh, this uh, tip guard, needle guard off, and I can get real close and spray fine if I need to. And uh, it's easy to clean, super easy to clean, super easy to take care of. Just a, a rock-solid, well-built airbrush. All right, now if I can only have two airbrushes, this would be my second airbrush, and I use this a lot for fine work. This is the Procon Boy PS770 by GSI Creos. Uh, this isn't as easy to clean, but it's a, it's a real fine airbrush, really well built. Uh, I, think, I think it's comparable to the Iwata Micron something, a real high-end airbrush. But this was like 220 bucks. It's got this valve down here. You can control the air pressure, I think. I don't know, I never use it. Um, but it's one of the only airbrushes that I have that have this little valve on there. Really good airbrush. Now, when I first got this, I did bend the needle. I had to buy a new one, which was like 40 bucks. So, I mean, parts are pretty expensive. Um, but uh, it's a really, really good quality airbrush for fine work. You can get in there and get real fine lines with it. Awesome airbrush. Okay. So let's move on to my favorite thinner. And this is Mr. Color Leveling Thinner. Now I use this for all my Tamiya paints. I can, I can uh, use it for all my lacquer stuff. And I th I've got hardware store lacquer. <coughs> and there's a difference. This is what I use to clean my airbrush, this regular hardware store lacquer. This is what I use to paint with. 
and there's something in here that uh, gives it a, a quality where it dries slower and it just you can get a really smooth finish if you mix your paints right with this stuff awesome stuff all right let's get look at my favorite thinners now I use my mr. color leveling thinner with this stuff these are my favorite primers I've got mr. finishing surfacer 1500 black and 1500 in gray my favorite primer they are a lacquer primer they do stink and you can use this to uh, thin it down and it gives you a real durable uh, nice primer coat and some people I see don't use primer that's totally up to you I find that if I don't use primer especially with Tamiya paints the paints just gonna flake off and I can't mask I'll put this down get a nice smooth coat with um, with this stuff and then I don't have to worry about stuff peeling up uh, awesome primer highly recommended all right okay my favorite paints now there are a lot of good paints out there I'm just gonna go with my favorite tried and true Tamiya acrylic paint what I like about this and this is what I started off with and a lot of people ask me why don't I go to MRP or some other paint well I've already got almost every color of this stuff I know how to use it, I'm used to it, and it's it's bulletproof as far as I'm concerned. Now, it you know, it, it, it does scratch off sometimes, you gotta kinda be careful with it, but I find when I do use this stuff, it's a lot harder to scratch off. One of the things that I really like about this is you can thin it with just about anything. So, you can use regular Tamiya X28 thinner, Tamiya has a lacquer thinner, I normally use Mr. Color Leveling Thinner to thin it with. You can also use, uh, let me see if I can find it. Um, oh. You can also use isopropyl alcohol. Now a lot of times when I do some, re some shading and I want to uh, mix the paint really thin and just do some shading with it, I'll mix it with IPA because it dries almost instantly. And uh, this is just cheap, I don't know, a couple bucks at, at Walmart, 91% IPA, and uh, it works like a charm with this stuff. So, to me, a paint's my favorite. Another thing, it's kind of boring, but uh, since I do do a lot of painting and mixing and stuff, I don't pour it. You can pour paint the uh, to me, a paint out, but I like to use these little pipettes. And these are, I think, a hundred or a three milliliter pipettes. Uh, you can get them in packs of a hundred. I get them off eBay. There's a seller in Tennessee for like five bucks for a hundred of these three mils. And you know, I'll I'll use my pipette and do my mixing with it. And when I put it in my paint in the airbrush, you know, I'll have one another one with my thinner, and I'll just thin it out. And instead of like mixing and stirring, I just suck it up and squirt it back in, and then I just throw them away. Well, not good for the environment, but, uh, you know, is what it is. So, uh, pipettes, the three millimeter kind from eBay, just awesome stuff. All right, now let's look at some other different things. Um, now, if you're going to, I use a Cricut, and how I, use, how I make my masks, I use this Tamiya sticker sheet. And they come in a couple different varieties. And it's basically Tamiya tape, but in a big sheet. <clears throat> and they come in these packs of, I believe they're five, and they're not quite the size of a piece of paper. But I can stick these in my Cricut and I can make masks with them. I like them because they're a lot stickier than say if I used Aura Mask. If you guys do a lot of, uh, Aura Mask is kind of a vinyl um, masking sheet but it just doesn't stick very well and I can't get it to conform around corners. This stuff, it sticks well to the model and I can get it to conform. Um, you can also use it, if you, even if you don't have like a, a vinyl cutter to make masks, you can just trace, um, trace whatever you want to cut out or you can draw letters and then cut them out and then apply it that way. Uh, just invaluable stuff. You know, when I use it, I cut, I cut out like right here, I've used a sheet, and then I just save my scraps, so I try to waste as little as possible. I, uh, I think these are about 5 or $6 for um, a package of five, but really invaluable if you do a lot of your own uh, 
painting of, of artwork and, and uh, letters and numbers and stuff. Really valuable stuff. All right. Um, oh, I forgot this with my painting stuff. My favorite matte coat, my final matte coat that I use is the Windsor and Newton's acrylic matte UV varnish. And I think I've shown this before, I'm not sure. This is like really thick stuff. It's kind of a white, almost, it's not opaque, but it's a milky looking, real thick varnish. I thin it down with some Vallejo thinner and it gives you a nice, dull, durable finish on your model. Now I don't, and I have used oil paints on top of this, but typically what I use whenever I put a, a flat coat on my models to do oil work, I use the Tamiya Flat Clear. But once I'm done with the model and I, and I put my final coat on it, this is what I use. Really good stuff. It goes on smoothly and uh, gives it a real nice finish. Uh, for those of you that like, to, like me, like to build your planes in flight, another one of my favorite things are acrylic Rods. Now I've had a lot of questions because I do build a lot of my planes in flight. I get a lot of questions of where I get my rods. And uh, you know, I don't know the seller's name, but I get them on eBay. Here's some real thick ones. I'm not sure how thick these are. Maybe a half inch. Uh, but I get them in a bunch of different sizes for different, different applications. These are 3 8 inch. See right there. And I've got some smaller ones. I need to get some smaller ones. Just for, for different stuff. Now, I've got these real small ones, which, you know, uh, I don't use very often. But even if you don't put your planes in flight, you can, you can you know, especially if you're scratch building and stuff, these can come in real handy. Uh, I built an MAK kit not too long ago where I used these to, to uh, I put hot glue on them and made it look like smoke and fire coming from a missile that was shooting out. And, uh, you know, there's just a lot of uses. But for me, basically, I use these for my in-flight display. Really good stuff. All right. Uh, I think that is probably about it for my favorite things. Um, oh, one other thing. Hold on one second. Okay. So another one of my favorite things. And... These are MAK kits or Machine and Krieger, if you've never heard of them. It's kind of like a sci-fi type um, model kit, and I love them. Uh, Hasegawa makes them. I think another company probably made them. But uh, you can do a lot of things with these. It's, it's one of those things where it's like a, a blank canvas. They're pretty easy to put together. I can usually put one together in a day, and they're real fun to weather. Um, and I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard of them, but for those of you who haven't, these are really awesome kits. Uh, it kind of breaks up the monotony if you're doing tanks or uh, planes or cars. Uh, this is something to kind of break up that monotony. And every once in a while when I kind of get burned out on doing planes, I'll open up one of these. They come in a, in a variety of different flavors. Um, this one is kind of like a, a mobile armor suit, the Sea Pig. Um, and this one is some kind of a, a motorized armored manned vehicle but I'll show you this is one that I did uh, a couple weeks ago after I completed my uh, ICM B26 uh, this is I think the the GANS was what they call it G-A-N-S but it gives you a lot of practice on doing weathering and there's really it's not like you're trying to replicate a plane or anything you can do whatever you want so this is one that i did um like i said not too long ago you get to practice weathering uh just uh, you know sky's the limit on what you can do with these and i thought this one turned out really cool i did a lot of chipping with hairspray and uh, some other techniques and some oil paint stuff and you know, I got the the number there. And my dog's barking. So that's what these are like. Here's another little one, like an armor suit type thing. And they're just really cool little display pieces. Now I've sold a few of these on eBay. 
Um, but I don't typically sell these. I don't know. I may I may sell this one on eBay. I'm not sure. But uh, they're just fun to fun to do. So another one of my favorite things, fellas. All right. Well, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Stay tuned. In the next couple days, I'll have a video out uh, on my next build series. And I will uh, see you then.